you uh, might have noticed we started a couple of minutes early. Uh, that's because we have some exciting things. What we're doing is we're testing out our new live system. And uh, if all works this week as we test out our new system, um, if we get shut off by the sensors, guess what? We still get to go. And uh, that's exciting. So um, we're going to be able to be on our app. We're going to be able to be on the website, all of those different things. We, if we get censored by YouTube and Facebook, uh, we don't have to, uh, you can still watch us. So that's cool. We'll still be on Roku. And uh, so this is a test. And um, I hope it blesses you guys. We could use your prayers because it's been a lot of work getting here. And also here's something to pray about. We'll finally be able to do Too Hot for YouTubes. So we're shooting for that next week. We have the conferences coming up this week. In fact, if you haven't registered for the live stream yet, I encourage you to. It's only $14.99. Uh, it's going to be terrific. As you know, Billy Crone's going to be there, Brandon Holthouse, Monkey Works. Um, it's just going to be over the top. We have Andy Woods is going to be there. Let's see, Don Stewart, Don Perkins, James Cadiz. Uh, Joe Pettick and David Tal is going to be opening up the conference on Friday. And uh, I'm looking at all this going on in Israel. We're going to get to that in just a minute. It's just great. David's going to be in person. He's actually here from Israel. So really looking forward to that. And uh, again, it's only $14.99. You can go to the app and you can register there. You can also go to the website, hopeforourtimes.com, and register there and by the way our trip to israel is full the one coming up in the fall but if you go to the events page you click on it, it'll take you to a waiting list for uh, the other trips that we have coming up uh, lord willing that is in 2023 okay a lot of ground to cover we're in amos chapter 7 actually uh, chapter 8 it's actually a short chapter so not a lot of ground there but it's it's very impactful um, the things that were happening, the judgment that came, and the reasons why. We're going to see them with details that we have not seen to this point in Amos. In fact, the other prophets, we really don't see this type of detail that we're going to see here in just a few minutes. So uh, the title of this message that I gave it is straight from um, the uh, uh, Bible itself, from Amos chapter 8. It is famine of the word because this is what Amos says here's the problem you guys are going to be looking for the word of God because you're going to realize it's your only hope and you're not going to be able to find the word of God anywhere folks we are headed there right now aren't we all right couple of news items just to bring it bring us up to speed before we get going I'll do some updates this week uh, but uh, first off look at this one this from zero hedge the revolution has begun 75,000 Brits to stop paying power bills amid inflation storm. Here's this next article. Supply chain problems will persist because the system is being sabotaged. I want you to think of that. Think of this article, the system is being sabotaged because it comes into play here in Amos chapter, uh, chapter eight, as we're gonna see in just a couple of minutes. Um, but it's really amazing as you look at supply chains, you look at uh, we're looking at the, the uh, financial crises, wars and rumors of wars, everything been, being manipulated. We're looking at uh, inflation and so forth. Really remarkable. Okay, uh, let's go over here to this next article out of the Jerusalem Post. Certainly many of you have been paying attention to this over the last 24 hours, after last 48 hours really, after New Gaza strike, Israel says it has killed all Islamic Jihad Leaders. So if you have uh, the red alert on your phone, that app like I do on mine, you'll be getting all kinds of alerts of the rockets that have been coming out of Gaza into the various parts of southern Israel and out into the desert there also. And um, so what's going on? And we, we think of this also at the time of Tish B'Av, which is right now. It means the ninth of Av, Tish meaning nine. Uh, Tish B'Av, well, uh, Tish B'Av is the date that Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the first temple when uh, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. Remember that? Tish B'Av, the first temple was destroyed. And then the second temple under Titus was destroyed on the same date, the exact same date, Tish B'Av, 70 AD. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. There's something about that date. I did a, a program this past week with Pete Garcia on Monday. 
we talked about that. You can go back and check it out. We connected a lot of the dots, or he did, with Tish B'Av and the various things that he had found that connected. And there are a lot of them that affect Israel and the Jew Jewish people over Tish B'Av. And now we have this uh, battle taking place, Tish B'Av. But here, think of this. What's going on as of right this minute? This is live. Uh, there's a ceasefire, at least I haven't checked my, my alerts in the last few minutes, but uh, there's supposedly a ceasefire. We'll see how it goes, but listen to this. So when you look at this, this is the Islamic Jihad. It's the Iranians. It's a proxy arm of the Iranians, certainly testing Israel, but think of this. The entire senior Islamic Jihad leadership has been eliminated. It is gone in Gaza, completely wiped out. The Israelis wiped them out. Entire Jihad teams completely eliminated by the Israelis. Entire Jihad soldier groups completely eliminated by the Israelis in Operation Breaking Dawn. Um, think of this also. Over 1,000 rockets have been fired, or right about 1,000 rockets have been fired by the Islamic Jihad, again, a proxy of, of Iran. And out of those, 96% were eliminated by Iron Dome. Now, Iron Dome costs about 50 grand each just to knock down, uh, just to shoot one of those rockets at their, one of those missiles at their rockets uh, to take it out. Uh, but 96%, so it wasn't real effective what Islamic Jihad was doing. Also, I read that 15% of the rockets that were fired from Gaza landed back in their own neighborhoods. So it's just devastating uh, the Palestinian people that are living there. They don't want this stuff. The Israeli Jews don't want this stuff. Iran wants this stuff. But listen, folks, again, the entire senior Islamic Jihad leadership is gone, has been eliminated. That is amazing. Entire jihad teams completely eliminated. So, um, you know, continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but we live in interesting days. All right, I want to connect a couple more things before we move on and look at Amos. And Damon Duck, I, I love reading Damon Duck, as you guys know, I'll post this article on my website tomorrow. I have many different things to say. Uh, he, this article is titled, The End Game Hasn't Changed has a lot of things in here, I can't go over all of them, but he writes one of the things concerning food shortages and famine, uh, the B, uh, BASF, one of the largest producers of fertilizer in the world announced that it will drastically cut its production of ammonia fertilizer uh, and uh, farmers can expect the price to soar in 2023. Insufficient fertilizer and higher fertilizer prices will result in less food production, more food shortages, possible famine and higher food prices. Now we're hearing about this and hearing about it. It's still coming. It's in the future. I say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I certainly hope so. It's been reported that governments are pressuring companies to reduce their production of fertilizer because government officials want to meet Agenda 2030 sustainable development. That'd be the climate change goals. I have been sounding the alarm on the climate change laws for years, folks, years. And I've been warning it's going to come. And now they're here and they're, it's gonna get ugly. But as you think of this, they're saying at a time we need, we need more fertilizer, they're saying cut back. So we've seen what's going on with the Netherlands, with the farmers' protests now in Canada. We're watching these things happen. In, uh, over in uh, England, 75,000 Brits are saying we're not gonna pay our electric bill. So we're watching this, people are getting ticked off. But when you look at, we're gonna get there in a minute, as I mentioned, with Amos chapter eight, you're gonna see what's taking place, the leadership intentionally, in Amos chapter 8, uh, they raise the prices on the people, the masses of the people, or as you, you, uh, Yuval Noah Harari calls us, the useless people. What for? They're going to make their money. It's, it's greed. It's their God. Um, they serve Satan. You know, this, this is what's happening. And we're going to see it in Amos chapter 8 in just a minute. So we have that intentional increase in fertilizer prices. Uh, other things too. Now, listen, you, you got to hear this one. He writes this, concerning world government and cent central bank digital currency, that'd be CBDCs, and I, I quoted this article earlier in one of my updates this past week. Catherine Fitz, former Assistant Secretary of Housing under President George H.W. Uh, Bush, said the CBDC is a global financial system, not a digital currency. According to, to Fitz, 
Central bankers are trying to create a system where they are completely free of the laws of nation states and governments. They are inserting sovereign immunity from all laws and literally trying to create a civilization under the law where they are free to do whatever they want, including, as we know it, genocide. Um, she goes on to say, uh, uh, or as he, he writes, as I understand, the Fitz believes bankers are trying to create a system that will allow them to legally seize everyone's money and property so that they own and control everything and citizens own and control nothing. That, that reminds me, and he even uh, comments on it here, that in the words of Klaus Schwab, by 2030, you're going to own nothing and be happy. I have all different ideas of how that is going to come about. CBDCs, I think, are a huge part of that, if not the largest. But there's other things that we'll get to in just a minute, too. But of CBDCs, listen to this. Um, on March 9th, uh, the Biden administration released an executive order instructing a long list of federal agencies to study digital assets and to propose numerous reports about their use and proposals to regulate them. Much of the executive order is focused on cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, which run on blockchain technology and have become increasingly popular among many investors and consumers in recent years. But there's an even more important to, uh, part of the executive order. Biden has instructed the federal government and Federal Reserve to lay the groundwork for a potential new U.S. currency, a digital dollar. Okay, this doesn't, uh, listen, this is going to affect the whole world what's going on here. And I want you to keep this in mind. Again, I promise we'll get to Amos in a few more minutes, about two more minutes. But um, lay the groundwork. So what's going on with this? He says, we're going to lay the groundwork for potential new U.S. currency. We're going to see that. If the United States were to adopt a digital currency like the one discussed in Biden's executive order, it would be a, one of the most dramatic expansions of federal power ever made, one that could put individuals and businesses in grave danger of losing their social and economic freedoms. Um, I, I have a lot more I want to say about this, but I'm going to save that for later on in the week uh, when I do an update um, because I really want to get to Amos. And uh, so we're going to go there. And, uh, and this is what Damon Duck says as this connects with Amos chapter 8. Again, the title of this message, here it is, Famine of the Word. And listen to these words by Damon Duck. Same article. Concerning America's decline, the underlying problem is America's abandonment of God. A recent Gallup poll found that less than 20% of American citizens believe that the Bible is the literal word of God. Less than 20%. In fact, the numbers become more staggering. It's like 96% have a really hard time having a biblical worldview. Wow. Uh, then he, he goes, electing leaders that oppose biblical values has negatively impacted the beliefs and morals of America. Without God's guidance... The decision of those leaders are faulty, and the consequences are not good. Uh, friends, I would say they are not good indeed. And uh, here's the great news. Jesus is coming, and we're going home. I will say this. Uh, just the last few days for me have been very odd in my head. I have been very troubled in my heart. And um, just, I, I just, I just sense, listen, I just sense there's bad stuff coming, really bad things coming. And um, I, in, in a way that I've never uh, sensed before. And I, I don't know if it means that we're going to be raptured. And then after that, it's all hell breaks loose, the beginning of the tribulation period. I don't know exactly what it means, but I, my, I'm, I'm disturbed. But when I think of all the people that are turning from the Lord, don't want to hear about what the truth of the Bible is. Isn't that amazing? At a time when the Bible has the answers for what's going on, everybody pretty much knows things are messed up. People are turning away from the Lord, and they're turning over to these wicked things. Uh, I pray that there's a great wake-up call. Um, uh, it may be part of the wake-up call of some kind of catastrophe. I don't know. But I, I do hope that God calls us home soon. Um, I think of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, where when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. Who are they? Who are them? Those are those the ones that aren't raptured. And sudden destruction comes upon them. God's desire is that none should perish. 
um, but that all should come to repentance. But there comes a time when God's patience runs out, and it's going to run out tonight in Amos chapter 8. And uh, let's get going. But again, I want you to, to be encouraged and know that Jesus loves us. He's going to get us safely to the other side. And the day is coming when we are going to be home with him. And I don't think it's going to be long. I think, folks, we are almost there. It's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. So hold on. So in Amos chapter 8, Amos uh, begins his thoughts based on his farming. Remember, he was a sycamore farmer, a farmer of sycamore fruit. You think, what kind of fruit is sycamore fruit? We talked about that in, in a couple of the past messages here with Amos. But he opens with an illustration of rotten, overripe summer fruit. Uh, when summer fruit is on the tree too long, um, it gets gross. It gets soft. It gets mushy. Um, and the beautiful smell that it has when it's first there, like think of nectarines and peaches and plums, these summer fruit, and you think, oh, this is so good. But when they're there too long, they start to get gross. And then and then the next thing you know, you get flies. And the next thing you know, you get, it's just mushy and yucky. And <coughs> the flies, you get maggots. This is the description that Amos is giving in Amos chapter 8. The idea that, um, that's the idea that's behind the place where we are. And you won't be able to miss the point. And the first thing that Amos brings up is, uh, number one, it's their sinful condition. Uh, as he describes this ripe fruit. Look at this, Amos chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. Thus the Lord God showed me, behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said to me, Amos, what do you see? So I said, a basket of summer fruit. And then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. And the songs of the temple shall be wailing in that day, says the Lord God. Many dead bodies everywhere, they shall be thrown out in Silence. This is pretty gross, pretty straight uh, forward. God is saying you are ready for judgment. You are ripe for judgment. You are overripe. It is absolutely disgusting. The summer fruit left on the trees too long. It is a stench. He's letting us know that Israel at that time was ready for judgment. And the correlation between then and now, folks, you, you can't miss it. And you don't want to miss it. So God says, what do you see? He says, a basket of summer fruit. In other words, summer fruit is the end of the year fruit. Uh, we've had the spring fruit. Now this is the summer fruit. This is the end. This is it. We're at the end. So God is making a double play on words here. It is the end of the year fruit, and it is the end. The end has come. There shall be wailing in that day, dead bodies everywhere. And then he says, uh, they shall be thrown out in silence. Wow, it's the end of the year fruit. It is the end. The end of my patience has come. I mentioned, and you guys know it, God's desire is that none should perish. But he also tells us that there is a time, in fact, where he says that, his desire is that none should perish. He says that in 2 Peter chapter 3, where in the last days, scoffers will come, say, where's the promise of his coming? And they, the people just choose to ignore the facts. They choose to ignore the truth, the biblical truth, along with what's going on in the world. So they can see it, but they've made a decision to be ignorant. It's a, in fact, he even says they willfully forget. They just, they, it's a choice that the people make. It says a thousand years is as a day, a day is as a thousand years. My desire is none should perish. But that day is going to come to an end. And then he goes on to describe the ends of the heaven and the earth. And that we ought to be looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. Why would God want us to do that? Because God wants to deal with sin and he wants to deal with, he wants to judge sin. It's disgusting. Uh, Satan has his day and, and, and God's going to do away with sin. In fact, in Daniel chapter 9, 70, day, 70 weeks, excuse me, are uh, determined for your people, for your city, to do away with transgression, to do away with sin, to fulfill all prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. That would be uh, Jesus. Okay, moving on. It's also worth noting that in Israel, although there were other summer fruits that were harvested for Israel, figs were typically thought of as the end of the year fruit. Um, but uh, when, you, when you look at this, 
in regards to Amos. So Amos is giving these prophecies of still probably 20 or 30 years before the actual judgment comes. Uh, when is the judgment coming here? I don't know. I've been saying this for 30 years. Um, and many prophecy teachers before me have been saying it uh, decades and decades before me that the day is coming. But as we look at the word, we know it's got to wind up and we can see the direction everything is going. But when I think of this ripe for judgment, you know where my mind goes? I'll show you. It uh, goes to Revelation chapter uh, 14. Listen to this. Revelation chapter 14. After the angels fly around the planet saying that Babylon is being judged, um, saying don't receive the mark of the beast or you will never be able to repent. After that, Revelation chapter 14, verse 14, listen to these words because it speaks of a planet that is ripe for judgment, a people that are ripe for judgment. And then, tell me, after we finish this and I show you the next thing, it does not look like we are ripe for judgment. I'll show you that in a second. But look, look at this, Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. Then I looked and behold a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. That's the same imagery that Amos is giving us in Amos chapter 8. So he, sat, he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had the power over the fire, and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. It's the idea that... Planet Earth is so sick with sin, so ripe, so overripe, bursting with just absolute wickedness. God says, I'm done. Folks, we're almost there. So the angel thrust in his sickle, verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 19 of Revelation. So the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trampled outside the city, and blood came out of the winepress up to the horse's bridles for 1,600 furlongs. This is talking about a river of blood uh, in the area of the nation of Israel that leads up to the time of Armageddon, or part of Armageddon people uh, it would be associated with. So look at this. God says, I'm done. It's over. They're just, uh, it's just sick. Um, what has happened? Amos says the fruit is ripe. It's so ripe, it's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Revelation 14, God's patience has run out. It's disgusting. Folks, tell me this is not disgusting. Look at this. Students at Ritzy New York High School forced to attend drag show in church. And I'm like, I spared you the video. I'm not going to show you the video. It's absolutely disgusting. Most of you have seen this. Uh, this is from August 3rd, so you're looking back a few days ago. Uh, and, and for many of you, you've seen it, you go, ah, that's old news. I saw that a few days ago because things move so fast. This is part of the problem that we have in our culture. Yeah, I've already seen it. I saw that yesterday. Show me something new. Listen, this is sick, folks. This is sick. Look at that again. This uh, Students at this high school forced to attend drag show in a church. I believe it's Episcopalian church. Friends, we're in trouble. We are ripe. Look at this one. Gay nightclub allows child attendance at upcoming all ages drag show. So you don't think we are ripe for judgment? Friends, we have trouble. So we have number uh, uh, verses one through three is the reason uh, is the, uh, Israel's ready for judgment. I believe the world's ready for judgment. A second thing, verses four through six, is the reasons for judgment. And this is where the dots really start to connect. I'll give you the reasons. Here they are, ready? Oppression of the people and greed of the leaders. And you have, I mean, if you can't see the connection here with the greed of the leaders and what's going on, oh baby. Think, I want you to think, supply chains, um, inflation, um, all these different things that we are watching, the CBDCs, which I mentioned, central bank digital currencies, have nothing to do 
with your blessings, although they're sold to us as blessings to all of us, it's about complete control of the masses of people. Check this out. Check this out. It's going to fit here in Amos in just a second. But listen to this. Un this is about the CBDCs and, and Biden's executive order. Unlike the current dollar, a central bank digital currency would not exist in physical form, meaning you wouldn't be able to go to a bank or ATM and withdraw it, which you guys know that. It's important to understand that the digital dollar would not be similar uh, to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies operate on blockchain technology, which is decentralized by design. Uh, so no group or individual can truly control cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Okay, here it is. Digital dollars, on the other hand, would be traceable and program programmable. The Federal Reserve or some other designated entity would have the ability to create more digital dollars whenever it sees fit. And depending on how the legislation is written, setting up the currency, the dollars could be formulated to have various rules and restrictions built into their design. For example, a digital dollar could be crafted to restrict fossil fuel use, to give bonuses to people for spending at particular businesses, to enact de facto price controls by disallowing, here you go, users from spending too much on particular products or even to redistribute wealth. It goes on and says a whole lot more here uh, um, about financial inclusion. In fact, in the Biden executive order, uh, financial inclusion is mentioned five times. Uh, equity and climate change are mentioned four times each. In other words, you're going to get, um, based on how well you do everything with climate change laws and and other people, if you go out to restaurants too much, we've decided we're gonna shut you down. Uh, you, we're not gonna give you enough digital currency. Friends, you look at this and you go, this is just truly a remarkable thing. Now, in this article it says this, um, the, uh, Biden has instructed the federal government and Federal Reserve to lay the groundwork for a potential new US currency, a digital dollar. Okay, did you get that? He's instructed to lay the groundwork for this massive control. Check this out. Now the end begins. You've probably seen this all over lately. I started following this a while back, uh, but he put together a great article on this. He said this, uh, now the end begins news podcast. Why do Joe Biden and the Democrats need 87,000 new IRS agents to flight climate change and inflation? They don't. So again, Biden's executive orders, 87,000 IRS agents, why? Again, Biden's executive order instructed the federal government and Federal Reserve to lay the groundwork for potential new U.S. currency, a digital dollar. So you start looking, so that's why we got the 87,000 IRS agents. Check this out. Uh, Jeffrey uh, Greider goes on to say, the Democrats' new Inflation Reduction Act will create a progressive socialist IRS agency where the government will replace the existing system of voluntary compliance and force file your taxes for you. How's that? Having your taxes force filed for you. This doesn't sound good. Democrats want to drastically expand the size and power of the IRS. If the left have its way, the Tax and Spend Inflation Reduction Act reconciliation bill will create an IRS that will excessively audit, harass, and intrude into the lives of Americans. Despite what they claim, new IRS enforcement won't be borne by the rich and large corporations. They already employ armies of accountants and lawyers to protect them from the agency. Instead, middle-class families and small businesses will be targeted especially self-employed people and cash-heavy businesses like restaurants, retailers, barbershops, etc. Is this one last power grab before the red wave washes them out of the ruling majority? I, I don't know about one last power grab uh, before the red wave washes. I'm looking at the, this election coming up in November thinking, I don't know what's going to happen, but this is, they have frightening plans. <laughs> How's this connect with Amos? Check this out again. The reasons why God judged the people back then, tell me this doesn't sound like everything we just looked at. Listen to this. Listen to this. Hear this. He even says it. Hear this. Verse 4, you who swallow up the needy and make the poor of the land fail, 
saying, when will the new moon be, ca- be passed that we may sell grain and the Sabbath that we may trade wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel large, falsifying the scales by deceit that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, even sell the bad wheat. What do you have here? Again, I already uh, showed it to you. Oppression of the people, the greed of the leaders. Uh, Greed is good. So what's happening here in Amos, when you look at it, what do they do? They're saying, let's get rid of the God stuff. Again, look at this. When will the new moon be passed that we may sell grain and the Sabbath that we may trade wheat? Ah, making the ephah small and the shekel large. In other words, this is about the money. Follow the money trail. We'll be able to sell the poor and even trade them for a pair of sandals. We'll get our slaves. All these people are going to work for us. Ah, that's what's going on. You look at what's going on right now. Listen, it is about you owning nothing and being happy. Who's going to own everything? Amos chapter 8. They're going to own everything. The elite, the ruling class, they're going to own everything. Not you and I. Just as it was then, it's happening again now. Except now, it's happening on a large scale. It's happening on a global scale. Hence, you enter in CBDCs. uh, You enter in all of the other things that you see. Well, why is it the supply chains are doing this? I believe they're absolutely, these are manufactured crises that are taking place. Why does the gas price go up? Oh, wait a minute, we have an election. The gas prices are starting to come down. What a quinky dink. They're manipulating because they can, and they know they can. Imagine, 87,000 new IRS agents. Why? They're coming after us. This is Amos, chapter 8. This is absolutely remarkable. Check this out. What is this about regarding the new moon and the Sabbath? Uh, Look at both of these things. So the new moon is a reference uh, to the feast days, the holy days of Israel that were timed according to the moon's orbit and rotation, right? The feast days. So think of that. Uh, And the Sabbaths, or Shabbat, are the days of the weeks, Friday sundown to sundown Saturday, that Israel is to rest and celebrate, giving the attention, honor, and praise and thanks to the Lord on high, to to Jehovah. So, in other words, they're saying, uh, the shekel's better, let's oppress the people. Hey, we can control the masses of the people, but here's the deal. Let's get rid of the new, the, the, the new moon, the, the feast days. They're not that. Listen, let them celebrate a little bit, but, but we're moving on from that. We're moving on from Shabbat. Uh, we're not going to celebrate the Sabbath. We're not going to, nah. Okay, t- t- give them the Sabbath. Let them think they're doing it, but let's charge a lot of money. Let's make this work out for us. We're going to get, and, and you know what we can do? We're really going to stick it to the, um, the, uh, the other people, the little people, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make them pay a price. We'll have slaves, the poor people. Uh, falsif- we'll falsify the scales. Look at that, verse 5. You know, the fact checkers, liars. Here's, how you, here, here's what you do. If you, get, if you see a fact check, this report of false, you know right away that that information is true, that they're saying is false. So think of that with the fact checkers. Whenever you see it, it's kind of like any decision Biden makes, you know, you should think the opposite right? Uh, it's these constant lies that are, if you want to stay on the winning side, you want to stay on the right side, you want to stay on the correct side, whatever they're telling you, do the opposite and you'll be okay. But instead of celebrating um, and blessing God and each other during the new moons and the Sabbaths, during the feast days and the Sabbaths, the greedy leaders just wanted the feast days and Sabbath days to end so they could get back to cheating the poor and uh, the middle class. They didn't want to give attention to God. Now we're, we're done with that. It was about the mighty dollar. Uh, the holy days took away from people spending money. Uh, in Israel, Sabbath days uh, are, are were to be a time of celebration and joy. And in fact, uh, so uh, for observing Jews, uh, they're back. They're at that place. I've seen them, and, and they they really are. Um, but Amos is saying. Uh, that the greedy are making it miserable for the people instead of a time of celebration, they're making it a time of oppression and they'll even change the cost of things. If that's what's necessary, you're going to celebrate the Shabbat, it's going to cost you a little bit more money for the food that day since you're going to be closed, everybody's going to be closed, we're going to make money on this. So again, I look at everything, it's just manipulating. They're manipulating things back then, it even says you falsify the scales. 
You, you, you make the poor of the land fail. You, it's a manufactured crisis in Amos chapter 8. But the manufactured crisis of today is, is, is way larger than it used to be. Listen, I have a theory, and, and I have a feeling I'm right. We won't know for sure until time goes a little bit further. As we're watching all these manufactured crises, and we have this principle of Amos 8 being played out on a much larger scale, we think of the words of Klaus Schwab, by 2030 you'll have nothing and be happy. And it's not just Klaus Schwab. He's just one vocalizing it. But he's got, you've all know Harari's telling him this is what you're going to say. Um, other world leaders, they're all, they're all in the game with this. Henry Kissinger, you know, they're all in the same game. Uh, Biden's a puppet. Uh, he's a puppet of the current whoever's running the show. Look, I look at all of the things. I'm reading this executive order on CBDCs. There's no way Biden thought of any of this. None of it. Biden didn't think of any of it. It's impossible. Um, he's not running anything. He's a puppet. China owns him. The Ukraine, uh, uh, Ukraine owns him. Um, you know, it, what, what, a, what a mess, right? Okay, everything's manufactured, just like Amos chapter 8. I want you to think of this. So where I live in Southern California, um, they're pushing houses, new houses are being built more and more out near where we live. It's because it's an expandable area. It's hot, it's a desert, and it's, it's affordable housing uh, out here, uh, which brings along with it some other problems too. But nevertheless, it's California and crime is what crime is. Okay, so, but with that, I'm looking and got all these housing starts. I mean, a lot of them. I can drive 10 miles that way and all kinds of housing starts. And right here in our valley, housing starts. I'm thinking, okay, they're working hard at all these houses. But I read the real estate. I follow the real estate market. I've followed the real estate market for years because I used to be in real estate before I was a pastor. So I look at this and I think, okay, something fishy is going on. I remember 2008 and the collapse. I remember the collapse from way back, late 80s, early 90s. I, I was in it back then. I remember watching these things. I remember the Jimmy Carter days before that. And, and so watching, I'm watching now, it's very strange. Why are they still rushing to build all these big homes, beautiful homes, when you can see things starting to go like this? You can watch them. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. You know, you see interest rates going up. Houses are costing a lot more for the same size house. You know, a $400,000 home now costs way more than a $400,000 home did a year ago because of interest rates. So you're going, okay, what's really going on? I have a theory. BlackRock, these big builders, these big lenders, it's not about selling these homes anymore. I think it's going into rentals. And I think there's a whole generation that's being created by the narrative that's out there that is causing people, I don't necessarily want to own, actually renting is better. And rental, rent is off the charts expensive right now. Unbelievable, I don't know about where you live, but it is here. So I'm watching things going, okay, this is very fishy to me. Why are they building so much when they know people can't afford to buy it or they know foreclosures are gonna come? I believe it's their end game. By 2030, you'll own nothing and happy. These, these neighborhoods are being created, I believe, with the intent as rentals by 2030. And the majority of people are going to be in them. They can't afford these houses, can't afford to pay these ridiculous mortgage rates, let alone rent. But what else we hear about universal basic income? That's coming. Guess what? You'll be able to own nothing, and you'll be happy. You have a nice home to stay in. You get a universal basic income. All of the useless people like us, we all get the same amount of money. Um, Amos chapter 8 is a perfect example for all of this, and I think... Oh, they, they oppress the poor so severely that for a little bit of silver, they can buy a person from a poor family and turn them into a slave and trade a poor person for a pair of shoes. No matter what the leader said, they had no genuine thought of good toward the people. The people, Amos chapter 8, were useless and they were manipulated and these leaders stuck it to them. We just see it on a much grander scale right now. Listen, I want to say this before we move. We're, we're going to be wrapped up here in just a minute. I'll get to your questions. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart because as it was then, it's going to be now. God says, I'm going to judge you because this is what you leaders are doing to the people. Be encouraged. Uh, stay focused on the Lord. Don't lose heart. Be hopeful. The end result of the wicked people is not good. God showed us their sinful condition. 
He also shows us there's suffering that is coming. Okay, let me read through this. I want to wrap up, get to your questions. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. In other words, I've seen what the evil people have done. I've seen what these evil leaders have done. He says, that's what he's saying here. I will never forget any of their works. So don't lose heart. I'm watching. It may seem like these people are getting away with it. They are not. Their day is coming. It's coming. Surely I will never forget. Shall the land not tremble for this and everyone mourn who dwells in it? Of all, all of it shall be, shall swell like the river, heave and subside like the river of Egypt. Wow. Listen, he goes, I'm, I'm going to judge. I'm going to deal with it. If you're on the receiving end of pain or so, because of what people are doing, God says, I'll deal with it. Don't worry about it. Continues, verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord God, that I will make the sun go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, into grieving. The things that should be joyful, it's going to turn into grieving. You ignored me on the feast days, guess what? You're going to hate it when the feast day comes around. You're going to be grieving. And all your songs into lamentation. No more songs of joy. It'll be songs of weeping. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head. I will make it like the grieving for an only son and its end like a 